give the value or the values of k for k if 3 squared plus k minus 2 x plus 5 has real solution. Now, what does this mean? Real solution means uh, this is a quadratic equation. Okay, one thing that should be clear is this is a quadratic equation. So, in simple language, uh, the question is when would a quadratic equation have real solution? Okay, now so let me explain what does real solution mean. Suppose if you have a quadratic equation and if you graph it, it's going to be a parabola. Okay, so if you have a quadratic equation and that's going to be a parabola, it's going to intersect the x-axis. This is one possible way that will intersect the x-axis at two different points. So this is say x1, this is one root or one solution and this is the other solution. So this is in simple language solution means when, solution means when does it hit the x-axis or when does this become zero. So a quadratic equation is always equal or is always said to be equal to zero because a quadratic equation has this form of ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. So here we are asking the question when would this become zero? Well, it can become zero when the uh, when the parabola uh, hits the x-axis at two points. At this point, your y value is zero. So this is this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. So at this point, your y value is becoming zero, and that's what we are looking for. You can get the other uh, solution. Other possibility is your parabola just touches the it can be, say, a parabola just touching. There's only one solution here. This is called only, uh, you've got only one root. Okay, so this is x1 is equal to x2. You can say there are two roots or both are equal. So here there are, this means two solutions. In some books, they, you, they also call it roots. This is two solutions when x is when your y is getting zero. In this case, you got only one solution. This is two ways in which you can get real solution. And there's a third way where you can get no solution, no real roots. And this is what it means. There are no real roots. That means if you graph it, oops, if you draw a parabola, you can get a parabola somewhat like this. Yeah, it's not going to ever be equal to zero. This quadratic equation is always positive. Okay, so in this case, it's becoming zero at one point, and here it's becoming zero at two different points. And here you see there are no solution or no roots. No roots or solution. Or solution, or you can say no real root. Or this also can be said as no real root. Okay, so this is what it means. So it has real solution, means real roots. So let's write that. So this is the key word. Has, re, has real solution. Has real solution. Means, implies, this is something that you... Uh, this is called the determinant, b squared minus 4ac is either equal to 0 or b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. So these are the two possibilities. So in this case, the determinant, okay, you may be wondering where did I get this determinant from. This is from the quadratic formula, which is x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. I'm not going into the logic behind this, but I think you can understand the logic. So this is called the determinant. This determines the nature of roots. So yeah, in this case, if there are two solutions, your b squared minus 4ac is, to be, is going to be greater than 0. You can check it yourself, make up a quadratic equation which hits the x-axis at two points, and then you find this, it will always be greater than zero. In this case, b squared minus 4ac 
is going to be equal to zero. And in this case, it will be going to be always less than zero. B squared minus 4ac is going to be less than zero. So, this means this. This means this and this together. Okay. So, this, you can say this means mathematically or algebraically, you can from this, you can write this. So, this implies, you can say, you can write this together like this. B squared minus, let me write this properly. This implies B squared minus 4AC is greater than equal to 0. Okay. So, now we need to determine what is A, what is B, and what is C. So, this is your A. This is A. This is B. And this is your C. Okay. So, let's put that in the equation. So, it is uh, B squared, which is K minus 2, the whole squared. So, it is K minus 2, the whole squared minus 4 times A, A is 3, and your C is 5. C is 5 is greater than equal to 0. So now expanding this, this is K minus 2 times K minus 2 minus, this is 12 times 5 is 60, is greater than 0. So this means this is K squared minus 4K plus 4 minus 60 is greater than equal to 0. Sorry, greater than equal to 0. This means k squared minus 4k minus 56 is greater than equal to 0. Now, the, from here, you can understand this better graphically. So, yeah, if you graph this, uh, using a graphic calculator. You can do that yourself. So let me draw a sketch of it. So the graph would look, if you graph this, so this is again a quadratic equation. The graph would look somewhat like this. Okay. Okay. So you can find this point. This is not important, but this point would be 2 comma minus 60. I'll show this on a graphic calculator. This point is in 1 dp, it is minus 5.7, and this point would be 9.7, okay, 9.7. So here the question is, when this is the equation, this is the, this is the, uh, the this is the graph of this equation, k squared minus 4k minus 56, uh, or this is the graph of this equation. Now you're asking the question, when is this becoming greater than zero? So this has got two meanings. This has got, in fact, two equations. So you're asking the question, when is k squared minus 4k minus 56 equal to zero? That's one question you need to answer. And you need to also answer when is k squared minus 4k minus 56 is greater than zero. So graphically, you can understand it becomes zero at these two points. If you have, uh, this equation becomes zero at minus when x is when k is I mean when k is minus 5.7 or 9.4, and it is greater than zero for these values. So this parabola or this when k is less than minus 5.4, it is greater than zero. And when k is greater than 9.7, it is, this is always going to be greater than 0. So here we can say k is, so this thing is going to be equal to 0. So here, this is going to be equal to 0 when k is equal to minus 5.7. And when k is 9.7. I'll show this on a calculator later on. And this from this, you can say this is going to be greater than zero when k is to is less than minus 5.7, or k is greater than 9.7. So how do you write the whole thing together? So this whole thing, this whole thing, this whole information. There are four lots of information. You can say k 
should be greater than equal to 9.7 or k has to be less than has to be less than equal to minus 5.7 so this is how you write the answer so let me show this on a graphic calculator uh, so if you go on a ca graphic calculator and let me scroll down so that you can see the equation so this is the equation go to graph and type in x squared minus 4x minus 56 we need to change the scale so that you can see the whole graph i'm going from say minus 10 to plus 10 and on y-axis i need say minus 70 to plus 10 at a scale of 10. so this is for so gsol and root so this is minus 5.7 and this is 9.7 and just to show you the minimum the vertex is 2 comma minus 60. hopefully this video has been helpful